Hi, welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal, founder of MEM Investment Research, powered by SimplerTrading.com. And for those of you not familiar, I have extensive experience, not only on, but also working with Wall Street. For over 15 years, I was with William O'Neill and Company, and Bill O'Neill's the founder of Investors Business daily, and I was with their institutional marketing division working with top portfolio managers and analysts around the globe, teaching them the O'Neill methodology of how to uncover and take advantage of high quality growth stocks that go on to trade much higher than the broader markets. I'm pointing this out because a lot of what I'll be discussing today and really throughout my work is based on my time with William O'Neill, and it is a system that is very much founded on many, many years of studying these prior market cycles and in turn putting together this proven system. So today's topic is all about using a rules-based system to help you identify when a new bull cycle has come in to play. And then also we will discuss where the markets currently stand. This is being recorded on Thursday, July 21st. So let's take a look at why timing the market is really important for your portfolio management. And this is a quote from Bill O'Neill's top selling book, How to Make Money in Stocks. And in essence, you absolutely have to have a proven, reliable method in order to determine whether we're currently in a bull or bear market. And this is one of the most important lessons that you can learn if you want to stop losing and start winning. Also proven is the fact that History shows three out of four stocks move in the same direction of the overall market, so you do want to get that right. So when is it safe to re-enter the markets? And this question is referencing after we are coming out of a correction or as we are in the current period still in bear market phase with the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 both down 25% from their peaks and the S&P 500 down almost 17%. Let's see if we have gotten that confirmation that there's been a change in the trend to the upside. So first up, I'm going to be sharing with you a proven system that has identified every market bottom going back over 100 years. It's called a follow through day. And one of the first characteristics is going to have everything to do with price action among the broader market indices. And the follow through date does occur when one of those major indexes is up at least 1.4% on volume that is higher than the prior day. Usually this follow through day will occur on the fourth through the seventh day of an attempted rally day. Now, sometimes it can take place on the 10th day or later, but ideally that fourth through seventh day is going to be your sweet spot because as time continues, the viability of that follow through day diminishes. Also, when that follow through day occurs, oftentimes the financial headlines will still be quite negative. This is a factor to keep in the back of your mind. But in essence, no new bull market cycle has started without this follow through day. However, it's important to note that not every follow through day will work. The majority of the time they will, but there are difficult periods and occurrences when they will not work and we'll get to that. Also, the initial phase of that follow through day, you can begin very carefully adding high quality stocks. And by high quality, this is going to be stocks that are exhibiting characteristics of growth, not only current, but prospective growth going forward. Also, you want that stock to be in a strong industry group that is showing relative outperformance. So let's take a look here at the daily chart of the S&P 500 as it was coming out of that 2020 bear market. So we can see the bear market was rather swift, but more importantly, as it relates to those characteristics, that follow through day occurred April 2nd and 
it was eight trading days into that initial rally attempt. And that would be this day here. On that eighth day, the index surged 2.3%, and it did so on higher volume. Other characteristics on that day were the fact that the moving average convergence divergence MACD had already had that crossover, that black line up through the red, and was advancing on its way to eventually turning positive. The RSI was trending upward, and within a day or two did in fact turn positive. So from here, I'll share with you examples of when follow through day historically has not worked and what to be on the lookout for. First up is when a follow through day is very quickly followed by what are called distribution days in the broader markets. This is going to be the broader market indexes down on above average volume. And if we see that occur within a few days of that follow through day, this is not a positive. Also, if we see these distribution days clustering together, it will oftentimes precede a failure. Also, in the early stages of that new uptrend, you want to see strong price action among leading stocks. That's going to be critical. You want those top rated stocks to be breaking out of what are called bases, saucer type bases, where they can then advance even higher. So during 2000 and 2008, this was a tough period for follow through days. Many of them did fail. And the primary reason is because we were experiencing the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. This, of course, was during the bank system failure. And when we have this heaviness that is really disruptive throughout the economy, that made these follow through attempts not take hold. So here we are with a view of the NASDAQ in October of 2008 into March 09. Quite simply, an example of one of those follow through day attempts here on October 8th. And the NASDAQ did, in fact, subsequent to that, within three days, did begin to experience distribution. We can see the higher volume here. We had a secondary rally attempt, but in the end, that initial follow through day did in fact fail. If we move forward to March of 09, we did have a follow through day that did in fact succeed. And the markets did go on to much greater heights, nice MACD black line up through the red. And then we have that RSI trending upward into positive territory. Now, what I did want to go back and share with you here is this is your first rally day attempt in October. And then as we move out, we did have this secondary rally on above average volume, hence your follow through day, which subsequently did in fact fail. Did want to clear that up. So let's take a look at a current market as of July 21st of the NASDAQ. And what I wanted to point out to you is this is one of two follow through days in the NASDAQ for 2022 that did in fact fail. So what I also wanted to share with you is the reason that this follow through day failed. And then subsequently, the chart, of course, technically began to deteriorate. On this particular day here, at the very end of March, Fed Chair Powell came out and announced his very firm stance and an effort to reduce currently high levels of inflation that he was going to do, in essence, whatever it would take. And by that, it would mean raising interest rates, which in turn stopped the NASDAQ in its track. High interest rates are not good for high growth stocks. And of course, since then, we've seen continued deterioration. I'll get into where we are now at the end of this presentation. So let's take a look at some of the drivers that can initiate this new bull phase in the market. And one of them is going to be a resolution of the initial negative news that got us into that bear market. So we can take a look at 2020. And in that case, the number of global COVID cases did begin to decline in April. And that was the new bull market phase news that negated what currently took place 
in March. So also in 1991, it was the end of the Gulf War. That news, in essence, that negative news was reversed and the markets were able to enter into an uptrend. And then also shifts in fiscal policy. This could be monetary policy with the Federal Reserve. It could relate to tax, either corporate or personal, but that's going to be another driver. These are really critical events that can really push the markets into a new bull phase. And during that time, you do want to see leadership names. These are going to be stocks that are exhibiting relative outperformance, but also companies that have strong growth prospects. And you want to see these names begin to trade higher. At this point in time, the negative news that needs to be resolved is elevated levels of inflation as well as recession fears. So let's take a look at another indicator that can be helpful when you're trying to determine where the broader markets are. This is the volatility index, also known as the VIX or the fear index. And I'm taking us back to 2020 and we can see the volatility index really just jumped. This is all about fear among investors. A lot of unknown factors really starting to take shape as the economy and individuals were in a lockdown period. So we did see a big spike here in volatility. Rising volatility points to a downtrending in the markets. Quite simply, this fear is causing a lot in the way of selling among investors. So if we move forward, taking us out of March into April, I'm highlighting here the actual follow through day in 2020 that marked a new uptrend in the markets. And we can see volatility beginning to fade and eventually dropping below this 200 day simple moving average. This is often used as a metric viewed as constructive. And then also we had the momentum shifting lower and downward on this index that MACD black line down through the red. And in fact, the new bull phase started correlated with this action in the volatility index. So if we take a look at the volatility currently, this is a chart from today. I did want to share with you that we did see this volatility index close below that 200 day simple moving average in line with the upside momentum in the volatility shifting downward. Likewise with this MACD. However, also of note is the fact that we have seen this occur several times. This concept that fear among investors is being lowered and we've seen it then flare up subsequently. But of note, it is now below this 200 day simple moving average. And from here, I did want to share with you an example of a high quality growth stock. This is something I've talked about repeatedly. And I'm again taking us back to that 2020 bear market. This is Coupa Software. The company did emerge. This is that follow through day. It broke up above simple moving averages on its way to a base breakout. And the stock, this was one of my MEM Edge report holdings. We had many stocks coming out of this bear market that we held on to for 90, 100 plus percent gains, really getting that trend correct, as well as identifying your leadership names is going to be really critical coming out of this bear market. But even more importantly, it will be very, very profitable for those that succeed there. I will tell you the work that I'm sharing with you today is part of an eight part mentorship that I just completed and it is recorded. For those that would like more information, you can reach me at maryellen at simplertrading.com. And also in that mentorship, this aspect that I'm sharing with you today is just a small portion of what was uncovered. A lot of the focus was how to identify these stocks and then how to technically trade and treat them as they enter into these new powerful uptrends. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at where the broader markets are now. 
July 21st. So here we are with a daily price chart of the S&P 500 and we can see current price action this week. We had a number of bellwether names report very constructive earnings and in response the markets are rallying but more importantly we've now broken back above this 50-day simple moving average which of course is constructive this can be a very key area of upside resistance in addition we do now have a positive rsi and then this macd that moving average convergence divergence now entering into positive territory so higher lows also taking place so at the end of the day we are in a constructive period here with the s p 500. let's take a look at the daily chart of the nasdaq which we did review earlier relative to that failed follow-through day and we'll see here the price action is equally constructive with the NASDAQ back above this 50-day simple new moving average, nice high volume characteristics for the most part with your RSI trending higher and this faster moving stochastics also up here trending higher as well. And from here, I am sharing with you a current look at a two-month daily price chart of the 11 sectors in the S&P 500. And this list is sorted by relative strength. We want to be aware of where the relative outperformance is currently taking place. This is where your potential leadership names will emerge. We can see up at the forefront here, discretionary XLY, consumer discretionary, of course, Tesla on the move, Amazon, and really any number of underlying areas as well. Technology up here at the forefront, XLK, exhibiting superior out performance there as well with a move into semiconductors and other areas. And then also we can take a look at industrials, interesting move there with transportation stocks coming into the forefront. Now, as we examine where this relative outperformance is, you also want to be aware of which areas are generally underperforming. And take a look, we can see healthcare staples and utilities down at that lower quartile. Quite simply, growth is being favored at this point in time with these more defensive areas generally lagging. Healthcare is a little bit more of a hybrid. I'll share with you some areas of growth moving forward in that area. So let's go ahead and do that right now. This is a view of what I'm calling relevant ETFs. These are exchange traded funds that really encompass select areas of growth that are really important to not only the broader markets, but for those of you that want to make sure that you're on top of any rotation beneath those high growth areas so that you can take advantage. So first up, we can see semiconductors up here, that same sorting where I have it sorted by relative strength and semiconductors really on the move this week, partially due to strong earnings, but also general market dynamics as it relates to technology and really over sold semiconductor stocks up here at the forefront. So here's another area of growth that is also up here at the forefront, and this is IHI, Medical Device ETF, and this is that area of healthcare that can really be high growth. Take a look at that nice volume characteristic on today's 3% rally. And then we have biotech stocks that were really early in their downtrend reversal and currently remaining in a nice uptrend. I talked to you about software stocks. Again, another area within technology that is now up above this 50-day simple moving average. It still has overhead resistance, but nice to see software stocks potentially reversing their downtrend. Retail also on the move. This is in line with discretionary. XRT is the S&P 500 retail ETF nicely moving up above this 50-day simple moving average. So in essence, your higher these are your higher growth areas that are on the move at this point in time. Other factors to take into account 
currently would be the price of oil that has generally be trending downward. Now this is good news for inflation because high oil prices have really been a sticking point for inflation and we can see despite this decline here in the price of oil it is still above $100. It closed or actually as of today is at 105. Another area here that's important at this point in time are interest rates. This is the yield on the 10-year treasury and we can see after peaking here in late June overall it's been declining. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at one of those high growth areas I mentioned to you that is on the move. This is technology XLK, very, very similar to XLY, which is the consumer discretionary sector. So we can see with technology, we've moved back above this 50 day simple moving average. Your outside momentum indicators are positive and it's also advancing further above this 50-day simple moving average having a lot to do not only with semiconductor stocks and software stocks but also the major mega cap fang stocks such as Tesla, Netflix, and Amazon, Apple as well that is are in a nice confirmed uptrend. So from here, let's take a look at this same current chart of technology. And what I did want to share with you is this volatility that we've seen. Of course, many of you have felt that, but more importantly, is the correlation between the movement in interest rates and technology stocks. And this is something that we experienced throughout 2021. Stockcharts.com has a special that I put together about sector rotation, and I urge you to take a look at it. It's all about what not only what occurred in 2021, but how you can easily get in front of sectors that are coming in and out of favor. So from here, let's just go back to this June into September period to start. This is 2021. And we can see that technology was in a very nice uptrend to the very beginning of September before faltering. And from here, I did want to point out to you that this uptrending period here from June into the beginning of September, and you can see as interest rates were declining, technology stocks were on the move higher. As we move forward, as interest rates begin to rise, we can see technology stocks pull back. And the reason for that is because high interest rates diminish those growth numbers for technology going forward. And hence, the value of those stocks is lower so that investors are not as willing to pay those high valuation or PE levels for those high growth tech stocks. So let's go ahead and move on as we continue October into the beginning of December. We can see that technology had a nice run here. Take a look. Generally, by and large, interest rates were in a declining phase. But as interest rates began to pick up at the beginning of this year, we can see that technology faltered. Moving forward, same phenom, interest rates on the rise, technology stocks falter. Now let's take a look at this more recent move into technology that began with XLK, at least in the throes of bottoming and then eventually trending higher in line with yields on that 10-year treasury declining. So we can see the significance here as it relates to not only technology, but really any area of growth that would take us to discretionary stocks, internet-related, and elsewhere. I'm pointing that out because at this point, it is important to note well, I'm going to take us back to this current rally that is taking place at least this week. And during this week, we, there really has been no economic data that has been released. And also important is the fact that the Federal Reserve is in what's called a quiet period ahead of their meeting next week. So we haven't heard anything from those Fed governors. That's been really moving a lot of this volatility and interest rates. So it's allowed the markets to trade higher, particularly in these growth areas. But let's take a look at what's coming up next week and even tomorrow on Friday the 22nd. First up, we are going to receive the manufacturing 
PMI. It's a preliminary flash report where not all manufacturing firms will be participating, but is very relevant in gauging where inflation is. Next week on Tuesday, consumer confidence is going to be released. This is a number that Fed Chair Powell has spoken to in the past, a very important number. And then on Wednesday, the all-important Fed Chair Powell press conference following the Federal Reserve's meeting. And this is where they will not only announce their interest rate hike percent, but oftentimes give their outlook going forward as it relates to those ever important interest rates. And then on Thursday, we will get a first look at second quarter gross domestic product GDP. And for those of you that follow economic data closely, you'll know that the first quarter was negative relative to that growth. And recession is defined as two successive negative quarters of GDP, other factors also, but this is going to be a very important number. It will be that first release, very, very widely watched in anticipation of a potential negative second quarter GDP, which would not be viewed positively. Also on Thursday, we're going to get weekly jobless claims, which has been moving the markets of late. Another gauge of where the economy is, are we growing or expanding? And then on Friday, some other very relevant information that personal consumption expenditures. This is going to be indicative and point us toward, again, whether inflation is impacting consumer expenditures. And then also, we are going to get June consumer spending numbers and July consumer sentiment, all numbers that Fed Chair Powell and other Fed governors have really been paying very close attention to. And the point here is that next week could be very volatile, but it also will be very critical in telling us whether this current uptrend that is taking place in the markets has legs. We have not seen that all important follow through day, but from my work, that we are in an uptrend that nimble traders can participate in. And of course, those alert traders that are aware of this upcoming data that could easily move the markets. So in essence, until we do receive further information that tells us that inflation has peaked and that fears of a recession are behind us, I would tread very lightly into these markets. Make sure that you have tight stops on any new position. Again, given the inevitable volatility that we are going to be entering into next week, when these market bottoms occur, you're given ample time to get in and take advantage of any new bull market phase. Be on the lookout for that valid follow through day that I mentioned in the beginning. And you want that to be accompanied by evidence that, again, inflation has peaked and that we are not entering into a recessionary period. For those of you that have not already, there should be a link below. You can trial my MEM Edge report, and I will keep you very up to date on where we are in the broader markets. I do have a very vibrant watch list of stocks and a suggested holdings list of stocks that currently can be taken advantage of as it relates to this near-term uptrend that is in the markets. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.